Hey there folks, my name is Dan Bell and today's video is going to be discussing creating intra project dependencies um, and so if you've ever worked on multiple projects that are achieving the same goal. You know, maybe you're deploying a uh, large deployment of some kind of development project or some other project, and there, there are multiple projects that are all tied together. The best way to manage those is to create a dependencies amongst the projects rather than having one really, really large project with one, 2,000 lines. Uh, that's what we're going to go over today, creating inter-project dependencies. Um, so you're looking uh, right now, at my environment, this is one of my, my demonstration environments here. And actually, let, let's go to a different one here. I have a trainer environment. Let's make sure we go to the right one. Okay, so we're logged into that. I'm gonna go to Project Center, show you what that looks like. And notice uh, at the bottom, we have these two projects. We have CRM upgrade phase one, CRM upgrade phase two, uh, both starting on the same date. Okay, both ending at the same date. And notice in the Gantt chart, they're you know, again representing what I was just explaining, right? They both start and end at the same dates. What we want to do is create a relationship between these two projects such that the activities as they take place within the phase one project, they will impact phase two. Uh, so uh, well, ideally, phase two is not going to start until phase one completes, right? Um, and that's what we want to represent here. Therefore, we're going to create a relationship between the two projects. How do we do that? Well, we do that within Microsoft Project Professional. And there are actually a couple of ways to do it. Uh, some people who come from a Microsoft Project Professional environment are used to creating master projects in Project and saving the master projects. You can do the same thing in Project Online. However, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I don't typically do that. And the reason I don't do that, and let me go back to Project Center and show you why, is because you do have the ability to view the two projects together within uh, Project Online and Project Center view such as this, right? So I have the common, element here being the program field, which ties the two projects together. I'll be able to see them in this one view and see their overall timeline here in this single view. And as I demonstrate coming up, uh, when we use this temporary shell master project, you will have the opportunity to view the overall project schedule and project pro. Let's go ahead and launch. I have project pro open here. What I'm going to do is this. I want to create the uh, inter project dependencies. How do I do that? Well, the first thing I do is I open a blank project like so. Okay. Uh, with the blank project open, what I want to do is I want to insert the two projects that I want to create those dependencies between, right? So I navigate to my project ribbon and then notice uh, all the way to the left, there's a sub project to our button. Go ahead and click on that. Uh, and when I do it, it, it brings up you know, the normal open project dialog that you're used to seeing. And there's my CRM upgrade phase one. I'm going to click on that, select it, and then click the insert button. And that should insert my project right in there. And there it is. Right, so we can see phase one. Let's go ahead and put phase two right under that. I'll go ahead and click on sub project again. Click on phase two. There we go. All right, so this is a, you know, again, it, see, look at the top header bar. You see this is project two. It's a temporary blank project. What did I do? I just use it to temporarily open up these two projects because this is the mechanism by which I create the relationships. So let's go ahead now and create the dependencies between the two projects. I'm gonna expand them. Let's expand phase two. Then we'll expand phase one. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and do this things that you normally would do here within Project Pro. You can insert your project level summary task here, right? And I can expand my dates, right? And so now I can see the overall start and finish date. And again, they, they represent 726 to 81. That's because right now they both start at the same date and at the same date. Let's let's go ahead and take care of this. And notice in the Gantt chart, and again, you see the whole schedule. This is great. I can see that entire uh, relationship between two projects. I have no dependencies set. Therefore, we're going to set the dependencies between everything here. Um, we have discovery, upgrade. Then after upgrade, we do validation. After validation training, and then finally go live. Very, very simple project plan. Let's go ahead and create these relationships here. All finish the starts. So again, it's a very simple example, of course. And then uh, what I'm going to do is create the relationships between phase two. So we'll select these items here, right? So all I did is I held down the control key and continuously selected the items. All right. And I could have done this in the projects, you know, while they were individually opened, of course, and I'm sure you know that. There you go. So now we have the, the relationships created within the individual projects, CRM upgrade phase one, CRM upgrade phase two. Now let's create the relationship between the two projects. It's going to be between 
and notice that I use the uh, technique where you have a milestone that denotes the completion of each stage here, right? So I have validation complete, training complete, go live complete, uh, upgrade, and then uh, discovery complete. What's going to happen here is the relationship is going to be here. When the upgrade is, is complete, that's when a validation activities can actually start. What I did is, is I did um, clicked on upgrade complete, then I held down the control key, clicked on validation activities, and uh, that would select the two items. What I'm going to do is just click on the chain link up here in the task ribbon. And that creates the relationship between the two projects. Notice now in my Gantt chart, we have a timeline that represents reality, right? Therefore, my phase two project is not starting until my phase one finishes. So my phase one finishes on 8.6. Now phase two doesn't start until 8.7. Okay, so it represents reality here. Now, if you look at the predecessor column in validation activities, which is the first task within phase two, it denotes its CRM upgrade phase one, and then it notes the uh, row number here, which is uh, six. Okay, and six is right there. That's what it represents in you know, a project online, project server environment for the predecessor column. If I were to put the successor column in here, you wanted to see what that looks like. We can see what the successor column looks like here for phase one, successor to upgrade complete. It's going to be CRM upgrade phase two, row three. There it is right there. And that's how we create the relationship. Okay. All right, so great. You know, we, we went ahead and created those relationships. How do we save this information? Well, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I don't want to uh, publish this. I don't want to save this project, this project too. Okay. That's the one thing I don't want to do because the minute I save this, it's actually going to change these two projects to be sub projects. And then I'll have a master project and sub projects within project online. And to view the sub projects, I'll have to click a, a um, little checkbox that allows me to see the sub projects within the environment. So I just don't want that. I want to be able to view the projects as normal projects and use the uh, program attribute to be able to view them as a single uh, unit to achieve a commonality or common deliverable, right? So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to close out of here. Do I want to save project two? No. And then uh, what the tool asks me is, do you want to save your changes to upgrade phase two? Yes, I do. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to save my changes to upgrade phase one? Yes, I do. Notice I didn't change, I didn't save the master project, but I did save the individual projects, right? So, so that allowed me to, to not save that master, turn those other items into subs, which is the thing that I didn't want to do. So I see my check-in is still pending there. Um, let's go ahead and try this again. There we go. So now I'm going to upgrade, um, open phase one. Okay, so there's my project. Uh, interesting, so notice that there's the successor. Right, so it comes up, it looks a little bit grayed out here, shows that um, it, it's starting on 8.7, which is when the predecessor finishes, right? So 8.6, and then it starts on the very next day. It also is represented within the Gantt chart. I'm going to check this out, and I'm going to publish this, okay? And we can see that it's saving, and it's publishing in the bottom right. Right, so this is done. So now as I execute this project, and, and as the natural occurrence of the project, people do work, I update the uh, actual work and other data points in here, and dates fluctuate, this is going to impact my phase two project. Let's go ahead and check this one in. And now let's open phase two. And uh, we open phase two, let's go ahead and check this out. And, and again, you see, right, here's the predecessor, upgrade complete. Okay, it's a little bit grayed out to make it so that you realize this is my predecessor. Um, like we said before, now the date reflects reality. It's going to be 8-7, which is great. And so this whole project, is, the timeline is reflecting reality like we wanted it to originally. There's the milestone from the predecessor. There are the other dates we can see. Again, the predecessor is upgrade phase one, row six. Beautiful. Go ahead and publish it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to open up CRM upgrade phase one. Okay, let's assume throughout the normal, uh, you know, execution of this project, things uh, took a little bit longer than we expected it to, right? So I'm going to insert the column here. Okay, um, let's assume upgrade activities took six days <clears throat> instead of the original five that we had expected, right? So that's pushing things out a little bit here. I'm going to publish. 
You can see the publish status in the bottom right. I'm going to go ahead and close this, check it in. And now I'm going to open CRM upgrade phase two. Okay, oh, there's that dialog. So that setting was already set for me. So basically this dialog is gonna pop up when there is something that's affecting the start date or dates within this particular project based on an external dependency, okay? And, that, and that's basically what it's telling me. It's, it's alerting me to the fact that, hey, uh, upgrade complete you know, was supposed to finish on this date here, 8.6. Now it's scheduled to uh, finish on 8.7, right? And that's what's going to happen. Uh, it's going to affect the start date of your project, okay? Now you can see that it didn't really change anything here yet. What I have to do is I have to accept this change at this point in time um, and then let it make uh, changes within my project. And um, then it's going to go ahead and, and allow me to continue here within the project, right? So go ahead and close out of here. <clears throat> and the minute I do, notice that the Gantt chart went ahead and, and reflected that change. So you can see that now um, the start date, it looks like it's going to be 8-8 uh, eight, eight here. Everything got delayed by a single day. Ultimately, it changed the end date of the project. Uh, and, and ultimately, that's, that's basically the relationship between you know, having into project dependencies, uh, being able to save the projects without the uh, master project, and noting how the relationships or the, the dates changing between the two are going to affect each other project. So again, I'm going to check this out. Go ahead and publish it. Okay, and I'm going to check it back in. Let's go back to Project Center. Okay, I'm going to click on Projects. This is the all-important view to me. Now I can come back out here. Here's CRM Upgrade Phase 1 and 2. Notice that the Gantt chart does reflect the reality. You can see the overall duration of Phase 1 versus Phase 2. Dates reflect reality now as well. Okay. The other thing that can be powerful is that if I click this Roll-Ups button, I'm able to see the aggregates right for the the project program as well okay so again we don't have the master project and project pro however i can see the aggregates here for any kind of numeric occurrences so i can see the overall duration if there was cost information here as well i'd see the aggregates for those of you who you know who really really want to see well you know i'd really like to see it in project pro as well well you know you can do that you don't have to save a master project if you don't want to you can just go through that that process that we did in the very beginning really quickly hey um, you know, let me open up phase one. Okay, now let me go ahead and open up phase two. N could you save the master project? Yes, you could. You could do that, and then you'd have the uh, master sub relationships and project center. Uh, that's just fine. You know, it's I think it's up to personal preference what you're going to want. Um, you know, what I did is I I basically did it temporarily. You know, so here you just saw me. I went ahead and just created the temporary master project again. Now I have the benefit of seeing the entire project schedule in Project Pro again like so and like we saw before when you exit out choose not to save project three because that's that temporary master click the no radio button i really didn't change anything to these two projects so at this point in time you really have to determine well do i need to save the uh, upgrade phase one or phase two projects at this point in time i can say no to the one no to the two and the files have been closed out and, and that's it and hopefully uh you learn something from this video taught you something about uh, intra-project dependencies. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us directly, info at uh, intigent.com. We'd love to hear from you. If any video suggestions, feel free to let us know as well. Thanks and have a great day.